sup? Welcome to Tales Tomorrow. I am Maro, your storyteller for today, and with me I have some more RPG horror stories. I haven't been giving you a lot of fan service, so you know what? For this intro for today, we're gonna start off with a little bit of tail wiggles. Don't worry, I'm not gonna like ask it like like the video or anything. It's just some people want to see tail wiggles. Anyway, let's get some RPG horror stories up for today. The players want to limit the DM's influence. So this is something that has never happened to me before. I've been a DM for a while, not extremely experienced or anything like that, but I run a few games. A few weeks ago, I started talking to someone I know, and they mentioned they had a group of friends looking for a DM, and asked if I could do it. Since I really like D&D, I didn't think twice and said, sure. I met with the group for session zero of sorts to discuss what they were looking for in the game. Here's what they told me. They wanted someone to run Curse of Strahd for them, which is fine. There's one of my favorite modules. But that's where the problems came up. I told him I'd be happy to, as Curse of Strahd actually has a lot of variables and ways to make things interesting. That was when a player stopped me mid-sentence and said, Before you start, I want to make sure you're running it for us without change. I want you not to influence the module at all. Don't even change a comma. I hate when DMs think they know better than the folks at D&D. &D. So, you just wanna play it how it was written? Really? D are you sure you want that? Wouldn't that get kinda boring? Playing the same module over and over again if it's like written directly over and over again that you know exactly what's going on? Why would you want that? That sounds really boring, huh? That was strange to say the least. But I understand I wanted to run something as it was intended, and I said I would definitely follow the rules. However, the player continued, No, you shouldn't even use dialogue that isn't in the module, okay? That's how D&D is meant to be played. Also, you need to roll dice out in the open for us to see. That's how D&D is meant to be- what? N no? No, that's- hold on a second. I think you have a different interpretation of what D&D is. D&D is sitting around the table with other players having fun, most likely your friends, or maybe even strangers that want to play the same hobby. And the DM is playing the role, players are playing the role, and everybody's interacting. It's a big interactive improv story making thing. Oh, what do you mean you want to- you, do you want the DM just to read a script? Is that what you want? You didn't want them to read a script? Yeah, I mean, if you know, if you want that kind of experience, I recommend Baldur's Gate 3. Like, every single situation is going to happen in Baldur's Gate 3, you can know ahead of time, uh, directly. And if you need, like, a walkthrough to, like, go through it all, just play Baldur's Gate 3. Or hell, any TTRPG you can find on, like, as a video game. They're going to have the same script every single time, so you can play through them. Are you asking the DM to just read things verbatim, like, without any sort of changes? What's the point of having a DM at that point? Just have Chad GPT read you the module then and just play that way. I mean, might as well. Things felt really strange to me. I know I'm not experienced or anything, but this didn't feel normal. So I asked them plainly what they were expecting of me, and one of the players, who seemed to be speaking for the group, said, We hate when DMs abuse the power to manipulate the world. That's why we only play modules and make sure the DMs don't change a single thing from them. Imagine my expression didn't seem too good when he said that, because what followed were a bunch of complaints about DMs. And for me, it's on a way too close to a player versus DM mentality. It went on for a while, but there was no way I was DMing for them. I'm barely experienced enough to deal with normal players, and to me, this definitely isn't normal. This sounds like a gaggle of people that play with a DM that like play like a regular DM, and they were just upset or butthurt they couldn't like power game the way through the game, and they're like, man, all the DMs suck. They're gonna try to screw us over. DMs are just stinky winky winkies, and we just don't want to play with DMs. And if we want to have a DM, the better follow a script that we want to do. DM is another player that tells you, you fucking dickheads. If the DM wants to improv or change things up to make sure they can give a little more flair to it that's fine if they want to run it as it's written that's fine too but don't ask the dm to play like some sort of ai prompt the whole point of playing with the dm is having the dm that can actually add something that make your character feel like they involved with stuff and uh, maybe change up some of the elements in order to make it feel more zany interesting just improv things dm's allowed to have fun and creativity input even if it's a module even if it's a homebrew game the dm's are allowed to put in their own ideas into it just like players allowed to have player agency and put in their ideas that their characters do to the game storyline. I bet these guys just want a power game throughout the module because they probably read it a hundred thousand times, they memorize it, and they just want to be able to play out the power fantasy by just one-upping things. You know that's the same thing that people do whenever they're speedrunning and they're just trying to find a way to just get past the obstacle as fast as possible? They just want to play speedrunners. Play speedrunners with AI then. Don't have a DM there for this whole thing. You don't need a person to run this session. Have a chat GPT do it for you. Just fine. If you want to play a module that is literally so the same verbatim every single time from start to finish, play a video game. Just play a video game. Just go play Baldur's Gate. 
Pathfinder Kingmaker, whatever TTRPG video game, play that. Honestly, at this point, they'll expect me to be an AI simulator for their game with a voice, which is not at all what I'm looking for. I told them that, and they weren't going to be a good fit. As expected, they didn't like my response and started to angrily shout that I was wasting their time, that I wasn't a true DM, etc. That being said, I will no longer be DMing for this group, or for anyone that his friends of mine introduced me to. I'm just glad it didn't go beyond a session zero. Good, you deserve to play a regular game, not this kerfuffle, whatever it's supposed to be. Anyway, let's move on to the next story for today. I'm in an oddly good mood. Can you tell? Anyway. That guy brings the worst character ever, surprised when no one wants him in the game. So my first post here, and it's a bit of a rant slash vent. I recently started a Pathfinder 2 campaign for a few friends I had and a new player. Everything seemed fine. We were discussing character concept for a bit, deciding what everyone would play at session 0. That guy decided he'd play a Magus, who will refer to them as such from now on, and at character creation he already gave me red flags, when he started threatening a player with a game PvP over just a character concept. Uh, hopefully you squashed it down immediately and told him that you're not gonna be having this sort of thing and don't tolerate it. Listen, tolerance for some things is okay, but do not tolerate problem player behavior. When I said no PvP is allowed and we could talk it out here why the character is not suitable, the salt and complain it'd be more interesting to solve it in game. Now, personally, I don't mind some party drama, but I don't want the entire game to devolve into party constantly trying to kill each other, and neither did the other players who just decided to rework his entire concept and settled for a fighter. I got a short backstory from everyone but Magus, who just described the character as a demon hunter and leaves the whole thing there. Game day rolls around, and we do the whole character introduction thing, everyone describing their characters and interacting with each other, except you guessed it, Magus who is sitting alone in a corner and refuses to talk to the party because they don't trust them. I would rather meditate instead. Wow, a lone wolf edgelord that doesn't want to talk to the party, rather do something else other than interacting with them. What an original concept you have made. Wow. Let's continue. The party starts exploring the place. They aren't sure where they are or what's going on, so they look around and find an NPC. The fighter and the new player, Bard, start conversing with the NPCs and having fun, when suddenly Magus yells, I run over there and shut the door between them and the NPCs. This was red flag 3 at this point, and I'm getting annoyed. To annoy me further, they start moving their tokens around the VTT, looking around corners while the conversation is going around, so I'm forced to pause the game and kindly ask to not open the doors and wander without telling me, since I can't describe two scenes at once. This culminates into the Magus, smugly asking me every time of Oh, may I open the door? May I walk in a direction? Even during combat, which only aggravates me further. Jesus Christ, what a prick. May I do this? You may shut the f*** up and listen to the DM because they asked for a very simple ask of you. Not just to run around like an unhinged child and then you decide to be Oh, may I? Be pedantic and stuff. What a rude dickhead. You should have kicked him right down the spot. Said, you're not tolerating this. You're not planning to do this. You don't want to deal with this. You don't want to deal with the child tantrums. And you're not dealing with this shit. Because this stuff is so fucking rude. They push further into the dungeon and eventually meet a friendly NPC. Magus immediately distrusts them, robs the NPC, and when the NPC complains about it, yells slurs at them and says I want to kill him. The rest of the party says, no, you can't, we will not let you. Upon which he smugly replies, tut tut, GM said no PvP, so you can't stop me. Obviously don't let this happen, I just put a blanket ban on him killing the NPC, everyone else wants to live. Yeah, no PvP, doesn't mean the DM can do something about your stupid character, you jackass. God, like I had a really good mood, and then this idiot started appearing, and all I'm feeling is like my tiefling blood boiling a little bit. I just, I can feel the Celsius rising inside my core. Jesus Christ, this guy's obnoxious. Why is he being such a dickhead for no reason? Fighter has an in-character conversation with them, trying to be their friend, and ends up being mocked by the Magus as... You're a weak, pathetic fool who wastes time burying corpses, who will die for trusting the wrong people. Also, I don't need to worry about morality because I'm strong. Which makes me cringe to the edge of my spine. Wow, your character's an edgelord. He's so cool and interesting and mysterious. You will never be able to trust people if you just don't trust people. And you're weak if you just don't rely on anybody else and stuff. And all this other nonsense. Jesus Christ, dude. 
Like, ow the freaking edge. I am hurt. God, ow, sorry, guys. Uh, paper cut from just the amount of edge in here. Oh, my little pinky finger. Owie. Let's continue. We end the session not long after. I thank everyone for the game and leave. The other players have noticed I'm aggravated and ask if I'm fine, upon which I realize I am not. Try to have a conversation with Magus, explain why this wasn't okay, but I just get called an idiot who can't differentiate in character and out of character. After that conversation, I told them they aren't welcome anymore and blocked them. Still wondering what they're thinking acting like that. There's no point trying to figure out what idiots are thinking. Some people are just idiots and they can't stop being idiots. All you can do is just let an idiot be an idiot and not worry about them one bit. Forget them from your memory forever. You have other games to play and way more fun to have. Forget about any sort of idiots. Let idiots be idiots, but like let them self-flag themselves as idiots so you can block them and remove them out of your life and never have to deal with them again. Simple as that. My first homebrew campaign ended because a 39-year-old acted like a child. Hello, I, male 22, was playing with six friends. A rather large party, I know but we seem to be having fun. The player in question, male 39, has a main character syndrome. He's been working on it, and he was much better than he was in previous game we played. However, he indoctrinated two players into having specific backstories or relationship tied to him. It's not too big of a deal, but he didn't make it a little more difficult for the other two. They played together for a while, for them being more quick to action of violence the most, not even taking into account moral grays. Whatever, I added my campaign a bit to try to help keep it appealing to them. A new member joins, who I thought was a friend of one of the current players. Turns out they met a single time. Definitely would have been more hesitant to let him play if it was the case. He comes in and is a more peace-oriented character. A college of eloquence bar. And before you think it, he didn't actually get to use his insane persuasion because he joined in a place where it wasn't happening much and never really asked to try and persuade people. He was super cool. They're confronting an evil noble who they suspect has been taking messengers and imprisoning or killing them. He and another player say they should try to organize a duel since this noble has particular beef with one party member. The others wanted to walk in and try to just kill him. They convinced to be more careful. The noble engaged in the duel and it turns out to have been a copy. After that, the inciting player seemed to go off with the deep end, having his character cut his hair, pull out his military armor, and go in full soldier. He told me that he was going to pose an ultimatum to the party. They don't do any more talking and they just kill all the people in the Thieves Guild. Whoa, I feel like we're missing a lot of context. I don't know, we have a Thieves Guild coming up out of nowhere and guy going unhinged. What is going on here? I mean, clearly we have somebody going AWOL, but like... Huh? We get to the session and he doesn't say that to them. I assume maybe he's calmed down. Oh, and he separated his character, the brother, and the third guy's character away from the other three. So at the beginning of the session, I was bouncing back and forth between the groups as they did their investigating. Eventually, they met up and they decided to keep searching. They find a lead and follow two members of the Thieves or Assassin's Guild towards their base. The new player says in character that while they're talking about not letting their emotion control them, they're acting pretty angry or aggravated. The soldier character says, No, I'm acting as a soldier. I'm a leader and I'll lead and follow orders. You either are in or you're out posing the ultimatum halfway through this session. I'm guessing the soldier character is your 39 year old main character guy, probably, maybe, I'm not fully sure, I think they're having Vietnam flashbacks honestly. The new player in character makes a comment saying something about something else, and the player just says, I am done, I'm leaving, see you tomorrow, are the players, and leaves. We're all pretty confused, the other player leaves the call to call the player that left. The player of the brother of the soldier character also leaves. I chatted with the two peaceful members, the other one felt sick and didn't join the session, and we ended for the night. I wake up to a Discord server gone, the creator of the server, player of the brother character, telling me that I basically have to choose between him, the soldier player, and the other player, all the peaceful players, and that the soldier player can't play with the others and is done with them. They never spoke to me or the other two players and just peaced out. They wanted me to continue playing with them, but they were done with my campaign, and the brother player would take over as DM for the new campaign and I'm utterly baffled of how, how the person who's nearly 40 and one of the more level-headed people I know decided to act like a 9-year-old throwing a tantrum, refusing to change, after I and one of the other players changed for him. I didn't even attempt to talk it out. Bonus content, soldier character guy also said he was attached to this character, and he was in his mindset a lot. I mentioned that they were heading towards a dungeon and there was a good chance that members of the party could die. 
He then looks at me and says, Oh, my character's undying. Things look bad. He's teleporting away using Dimension Door. Assumably just leaving either his childhood friend or twin brother there to die with the rest of the party. Man-child acting like a man-child, you know, pretty surprising. No, actually not, not at all surprising. You can be as old as 40 and you can still find people that throw in temper tantrums over TTRPG related matters. Because they forget that it's a game. They think it's like a big power trip. They, it's a big power ego for them. They want to feel confident and powerful with their character. Maybe relax a little bit. Everybody's playing. Everybody's trying to have fun. But no, it's about their characters or what their characters want to do. Not everybody else. Anyway, let's move on from this man baby to the next story for to die. It's just a joke. Chill. During the great isolation of 2020, I joined the small Discord group I found through Roll20 gone on numerous adventures together since, and I still play together to this day because most of the members are chill. Notice I say most. There have been several horror stories from the group, but I'll start with the worst. The first player I had to kick from my tables. In 2021, I started running my own homebrew game. Over the next year, I found myself increasingly burnt out by the end of a three hour game. It takes me a while to realize why, and it's because of this one player. I'll call him Moby. In my group, there's a range of players' ages and backgrounds. We had three players from North America who at the time were 20 to 27 years old, three from UK, me, 27 non-binary, 21 year old player, and Moby, 40 male. I bring the ages up because he was constantly using it as an excuse for some of his behavior, as well as his autism. Two other players, and possibly myself too, are also autistic. It's not an excuse. Moby would constantly talk over other players. Player X describing how the finishing blow kills last enemy, Moby has to speak over them when they are mid-sentence to insert some non-joke or to try and share something random. In mid-BBG monologue, a noble is bestowing a gift upon a PC, or the PCs are talking to an NPC to gather intel. Moby has to state out loud that in a moment, how his character is going to do something idle. Not even anything relevant, just My character jumps into the fountain to chill off level. He seemed to have no concept of waiting. I began to communicate this with him, saying things like, We'll get to you once we finished X thing, but he would go, okay, then do it anyway. That's something you should really clap down on. If he consistently keeps happening, you gotta just keep clapping onto it until that behavior changes. Some people are just problem people, or maybe they don't know better. And problem play kind of requires a little bit of correction, especially if it's somebody new or somebody that's inexperienced in this sort of thing, or maybe somebody that just wants to have center of attention on them. Start telling people if they really want to describe that sort of thing to just do it in text. You could probably like put a like a little asterisk. You know, my character does this action asterisk. It's a nice way to be able to roleplay without interruption and stuff. Because being obnoxious and just screaming over people is just not okay. They just it's just a BM kind of thing to do. It's bad manners. Don't do it. It's rude as hell. Don't do that sort of thing. Then he would also fall asleep in games. We knew this because he's a loud snorer. The game ran at about two or five p.m. his time. It was incredibly disrespectful and it happened about half a dozen times. Okay, yeah, players falling asleep at the table, you gotta give him flags and basically if it keeps happening over and over again, you gotta kick him out. I remember there was a one guy in the old server that I played with that I no longer play with. There was a guy in there that played as a dwarf bard, I think, I'm not fully sure. Anyway, he had this habit of basically drinking at all the games, right? But he would always, after like uh, two after two hours of playing, would just consistently pass out and fall asleep. And you can hear him snore. It really became a problem until at some point they basically said, Okay, no more drinks during game time and stuff. If you got a drink, just don't play. It became a major issue. It's not an issue for most people because most people are fine. But if this guy literally has no self-control and has no self-respect to at least mute themselves or keep themselves awake throughout a, what, a three-hour game, you either kick him out or you make him change. And I get it, sometimes people have some sort of conditions where they can fall asleep and stuff. But if you have some sort of condition, you let the party know, let the people know at your table, let your DM know, figure out a solution for it. Because, like, this is just rude. This is just disrespectful and rude. One part that really angered me in particular was when the party met queer NPCs. He as a player always had to voice how weirded out he was by that, unless he met a lesbian, then he was suddenly pretty interested. The overwhelming majority of the other players were queer, and those who weren't were really good allies. At one point, they met a non-binary NPC, and Moby had to throw out all the most ignorant phrases like, but what are they really? And calling them he, uh, she, uh, I mean it. As a non-binary person myself in particular, it was aggravating. He would try and just randomly talk about his IRL political views in the middle of a game, like how he believed in self-determination, would respect pronouns, but he believed that sex did not equal gender or did equal gender. I'm not sure what it means by equal sign, equal sign. And I had to tell him to stop too often. 
In retrospect, I should have kicked him out of the game before this even came to be. But I'm someone who at the time did not have the emotional tools to stick up for myself and be direct with people who are being harmful to me. Thanks to abusive past, my instincts was just to take it. You don't really need to be like emotionally strong or anything. There's a really easy solution. The block button. It's extremely useful, extremely great. The block button works. The kick button works. And if somebody has been a complete disruption and there's just no way talking to them or having a conversation with them like in a reasonable manner, remove them from your life. But I fully understand with you not be able to confront the guy from the start. I mean, it's a difficult thing. Like if some people are just not really good at confrontation, how do you start that confrontation? I mean, now that you know, you know, block and kick buttons to work really well. But at the end of the day, if you don't want to kick somebody out, how do you tell somebody to just like pipe the hell down to the situation? If they're just not going to. There's not really a point of keeping somebody that's not going to be respectful at the table. Use the tools at your disposal because they'll work really well. For real. Anyway, let's um, continue with the story. But then there was his need to feel the superior in jokes. He began making snide jokes to other players about how their characters weren't optimized for combat. Or how the player didn't know all the rules properly. I don't run combat heavy games. I struggle to run good combat as a DM. So I didn't realize how bad it's gotten until a player messaged me that they wanted to leave because of the, his behavior. My brain didn't care if I was personally hurt by someone, but if someone hurt my friends, they were in danger. I told him that his straws were all used up and he was no longer welcome to the game. He proceeded to bombard me with days with emotional messages about how he felt completely blindsided and completely worthless now. How he was harming himself because of what I'd say. Okay, this is completely unacceptable. If somebody does that sort of thing, this is called emotional manipulation. They're sending you stuff in order to try to manipulate you emotionally, make you feel guilty. Do not give in to the guilt. A lot of people that say they're doing this kind of stuff, like self-harm, typically, or most in my experience, don't actually do that. They're just trying to say all this stuff because they're trying to make you feel bad. In fact, the best thing to do in that situation, I know it may sound cruel, is to block him and remove from your life and completely cut off all contact because this is not okay. This right here, what the fucker is doing, is emotional manipulation. They're emotionally manipulating you with messages about self-harm and stuff to make you feel guilty, to make you feel bad, to make you apologize because they think that they're in the right and they think that you should apologize. And they're writing all this stuff to make you feel guilty and feel bad. This is not okay. Don't let people like this control you or abuse you in such a way. After years of having this done to me myself, I can tell you to not tolerate these kind of people. Cut them out of your life immediately as soon as you see this. You can give them one warning, one single warning saying, if you continue with this, I'm blocking you forever, so do not mention this kind of stuff to me ever again. Do not guilt trip me. But otherwise, block them. They're not worth your time. They're wasting your time when you could be spending your time doing anything else in the world. I'ma finish the sentence, but like this is my thoughts on this whole thing. Because of what I said and done, and how he didn't know that they didn't appreciate his joking personality. I've never had such a fun experience DMing as I have after he left. We've played the game for another 1.5 years and had a blast. And I added even more queer characters since I felt more free to do so. Good! Well done for sticking up for yourself, for real. Well done. Don't let emotionally manipulative scumbags like this guy do that to you. Stand up for yourselves and cut them out of your life immediately. Even though you didn't do it in the past, this is a learning experience for you to know what to do in the future. Immediately cut those people out of your life. Simple as that. And I'm proud of you for this. And with that, that's gonna be all our stories for today. I want to thank you very much for watching and thank you so much for being here. If you like what I do, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. Also, if the RPG horror stories ever goes down or if you want to submit your own personalized horror story, email is down in the description below. I'll see you again in more Tales tomorrow. Bye-bye.